Hey everyone, my name is Monique Maserl and I'm working with the University of New Brunswick in St. John to create some webinars and peer-led tutorials on medication math. So today we're going to be focusing on IV flow rate and we're going to be looking at that for drips per minute. So we're going to be calculating the flow rate if we don't have a pump set up, if we have to go by gravity. And I'll explain a little bit more about this as we go on so it will make a little bit more sense to those who haven't seen it before. So our objectives for today are to understand what the drip rate is. Um, and to calculate the IV flow rate in drops or drips per minute. So the important thing to remember is that you can't have a partial drop when you're setting up a gravity line, so you must have a whole number when we're talking about drips per minute, and that will make sense further on in the video. So GTT per min, what does that even mean? So GTT represents drops or drips, which you'll hear me use interchangeably, and min is minutes. So why do we need to calculate this? Um, we need to calculate this because if you don't have a pump set up, you're just going to have a gravity line and you need to know how many drops into your drip chamber are going to calculate the flow rate, so your mils per hour. So the most important thing that we need to remember when we're calculating drops per minute is that we have to know the drip factor. So the drip factor represents GTT per mil, so how many drops it takes to get one mil of fluid. So where you're going to find that information, and I know it all sounds a little bit crazy right now, is you're going to look on your tubing. So here I've taken a picture of the tubing, and you can see right here that it says 10 drops equals approximately 1 mil. So that is your drip factor, and that's how you're going to be able to calculate how many drips it takes per minute to get your flow rate. Um, and what that means, so I have a line set up here. Hopefully you guys can see this, and it means that for every 10 drops that you have, once I open up my chamber, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So that was one mil of fluid that was just administered into the drip chamber. So that's how you're gonna calculate it. You're gonna be actually counting your drops. So we have options. Um, we can have a drop factor of 10, we can have a drop factor of 15, and we can have a drop factor of 60. So if you just think of this logically, a drop factor of 10, that's macro drops. So those are big drops. It only takes 10 of those to create a mill. Whereas if you have a drop factor of 60, it's micro. Those are going to be really, really tiny drops. And that's how many it's going to take to create a mill. And that's when you're having more specific drug that you really have to calculate. You'll, you'll see that on a lot of the tubing. So technology is amazing. We have pumps. Why do we need to know this? If you don't have any power, you don't have any pumps. Sure, they have battery, but I mean, if you're going a prolonged time, then you're not going to be able to have that pump. You're not always going to have that to rely on. As well as OR nursing, they use a lot of gravity lines, and emergency situation, also gravity lines. So it's important to be able to calculate this out so you can get the proper amount of fluid to your patients. So let's refresh before we jump into any questions. So the drip factor is the amount of drops per mil, like I showed you with the tubing. And then GTT per minute is the amount of drops we need per minute to achieve our, fro our flow rate. So that's in mils per hour. Okay, so first up, we have an order for 500 mils of D5W to be given over four hours. Our line has a drop factor of 15. So where do we start? Let's look at the information that we have. So we're given 500 mils over four hours. We have a drop factor of 15, so 15 drops to each mil of fluid in the flow rate. We don't know it, but we have enough information to figure it out. So let's start off with that. So we have, when we're calculating our flow rate, it's mils per hour. We have 500 mils and we're giving it over four hours. So when we calculate that out, it's going to be 125 mils per hour. So now we have our flow rate. So that's a, that's a good place to start. Okay, so now that we know our flow rate, we can break this down so that we can find what we're looking for. So it can be done in two ways. I'm gonna give you the more detailed way first because some people are really visual. I'm really visual, I like to see it drawn out. So if we're trying to find out how many drops we're giving per minute, we need to know how many mils we're giving per minute so that we can calculate the drops. So in order to do that, we are going to take our 125 mils per hour we're doing this per hour. We know that within one hour, there are 60 minutes. So this way we can cancel out our units here and we can find out how many mils we are giving per minute. So we are giving 2.08 mils per minute. 
So now we know this is how much we're giving per minute. So now we can find out because we have our drop factor, we know it's 15, we can find out how many drops we have to give to give our 2.08 mils. So we have 2.08 mil per minute. And we have 15 drops, GTT, per mil. So our units are going to cancel out here. We're going to be able to cancel out our mils. And we are going to have 31.2 drops per minute. So the issue with this is, if you remember at the beginning, I said that we can't have a whole number. If you, if you look back at the drop chamber, you can't give, you can't give 0.2 of a drop. A drop is a drop, and that's all that you can do about that. So we have to round. We have to have a whole number here. So we know that for this equation, to give the right amount, we have to uh, titrate our, our line to give 31 drops per minute. And we'll be able to give our 500 mils of D5W in four hours if we calculate that. Okay, so some people like less steps and they can kind of see the math a little bit differently. So this time I'm going to show you that you don't always have to calculate the flow rate. Um, instead, what you can do is you can take your hours, figure out your minutes, and then divide it by mils, which will make sense as I draw it out here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find out how many minutes are in four hours. So we have four hours. You know, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So four hours is 240 minutes. So this way you can find out exactly um, pretty quickly how many mils you're giving per minute because you're just going to take exactly that. You're going to do your 500 mils divided by 240 minutes. And when you calculate that, um, if you want, you can actually include your drip rate in this. So it would be a little bit faster for you. Some people like to do that because they know that they're giving 15 uh, drips per mil. So if you calculate this all out, you get 31.25. And then we know that we round to a whole number, so it's 31 drips per min. So this is, a, this is a good way if you can compile all the math together and see where your units cancel out and see what you're looking for you know, you're going to end up with your drips per min. So it just depends on what type of learner you are. I actually use the two interchangeably depending on the question, but it's totally personal preference. And I'll, I'll show you some more examples of those. Okay, so next up, we are giving 2,000 mils in 24 hours. Uh, we have a drop factor of 10, and we do not know our flow rate, so let's figure that out. Let's so if we're looking for our flow rate, we have 2,000 mils that we're giving over 24 hours and that works out to be 83.3 .3 mils per hour. So if we want to calculate our drops per minute we're going to take our 83.3 .3 mils per hour and we're going to cancel some units here so I'm going to start shortening it up so that you don't have to do every single step. So we know that this is per hour so we want to find out how it is uh, how many it is per minute. So we have 60 minutes per hour, so these units are going to cancel out. We're multiplying this by 10 drops, this is our drop factor, and we know that it's per mil. So this way our mils are going to cancel out as well. And when you do this math, you find that it is 13.8 drops per minute. And you know we can't have 0.8 of a drop, so we're going to round, so we are going to give 14 drops per minute in order to get 2,000 mils of normal saline IV in 24 hours. So again, we can kind of shorten this up so we can find out first off how many minutes are in 24 hours. So we're doing 24 hours times 60 minutes. And the answer is 1, 1440 um, minutes. So then we can, again, like I kind of showed last time, shorten it up a little bit. We want to find out how many mils per minute. So we're giving 2,000 mils in 1440 minutes. And we know that we have a drop factor of 10 DTT per mil. So this is going to cancel out. We're left with drops per minute.
and our answer is going to be the exact same. It's 13.8 uh, drops per minute. And if we do our rounding, again, we're getting 14 drops per minute in order to give our 2,000 mils of normal saline in 24 hours. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to have part two that's going to have at least one more example and also talk a little bit about uh, drop rate denominator, which is something I'll explain then.